Duke of Edinburgh was escorted by British tent founder C.J. Latter and chief marker Billy Butlin when the crew of the tent were presented to him at the Savoy. A big gathering of members came to the 10th anniversary of the British tent. Another royal link was provided by Earl Mountbatten, an old friend of the Variety Club. Almost everybody who is anybody in English show business was present. You could hardly move without bumping into little groups of comics and singers whose combined salaries would about balance the national debt. But that's always so at Variety Club luncheons. There was hardly anyone there, perhaps no one, who in some way or other hasn't contributed handsomely to the vast sum of more than £400,000 which the club has collected and distributed to its charities since it was founded. What a magnificent achievement in a mere ten years. The record of the Variety Club proves that the folk in show business have set an example by their own generosity and so been able to induce thousands outside the business to dig deep in their pockets for the good of the cause. It was an impressive assembly when the time came to sit down to lunch. And it was appropriate that the anniversary should be marked by the presentation to the Duke of large sums for the royal charities. It would have been strange indeed had not the proudest man present been the founder of the British tent, C.J. Latter. Your Royal Highness, my lords, Mr. Chief Barker, honored guests, elder statesmen, brother Barkers. Today I feel a very humble man. Jimmy, there are no words in my vocabulary to express my gratitude to you for the kind things you've said to me. May I just say thank you, God bless you. This is the 10th birthday of Tent 36. To me, a day of thanksgiving. I am deeply grateful for the wonderful things and blessings this club has enjoyed. As Jimmy Carreras told you, our membership has grown from 11 to 650 and is made up of men from all sides of the entertainment business. The royal family has been a great inspiration indeed. Her Majesty the Queen, Prince Philip himself, the Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duchess of Kent, and Princess Alexandra have all displayed the greatest interest and patronized our many functions in aid of underprivileged children. The speaker recalled the brave days of 1949 and Variety Club's first big charity venture. Our first function was to be a midnight matinee at the London Coliseum. With conditions as they were in those days, there were many who thought I was out of my mind for having suggested such an event. <clears throat> However, we turned loose the publicity boys with all the superlatives known to show business to exploit and sell the greatest, most fabulous midnight variety show ever staged with stars from here, there, and everywhere. Since then, we have never looked back. It is to you, sir, whom we are deeply grateful. May God bless you, and thank you all. Kenneth Moore told how he had to explain to his taxi driver just what the Variety Club is. Well, that started a lot of questions. He pressed on. Who's going to be there, he said. Well, of course, this was my great moment. <laughs> and with as much modesty as I could summon, I said, well, today, uh, of course, we have as our guests uh, the Duke of Edinburgh and Earl Mountbatten. There was a second or two before the penny dropped. Then he turned round with his eyes popping, went straight through a red light, red light and said, blimey, you got a couple of good clowns there. <laughs> so, How much 
how much nearer the truth he was than he ever imagined. After all, the clown is the heart of the circus. And what greater hearts have we in show business than the affection and devotion shown to all our interests on every possible occasion by our two honored guests here today. Yeah. Your Royal Highness, at a recent film premiere, had to suffer the appalling indignity of shaking hands with, guess who? <laughs> Nat Cohen. <laughs> For Billy Butlin, the Chief Barker, now came the high spot of the event, the presentation to the Duke of checks for the Royal Charities and for what splendid sums they were drawn. Uh, Mr. Chief Barker and gentlemen, well, I always knew that uh, the ways of sh so show business were very strange, but this proves it. <clears throat> Any other organization that has a birthday, people give them presents. But here you are giving things away on your birthday. And I know that the National Playing Fields Association and the award scheme and the National Association for the Blind and Condover Hall will be happy and delighted uh, to have this help from you. I won't say thank you, personally, uh, because I'm not getting anything of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you this, which is much more important. And that is that the return in human enjoyment on this investment of yours is quite immeasurable. And in any case, I'm convinced that it would make any ordinary stockbroker fall off in a dead faint. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't possibly thank the club or the individuals who have made these collections possible adequately for this gift. Now, a lot of people might suppose that this was a this, this uh, 43, no, slightly more, thousand pounds that have been given away today is something exceptional in the life of the Variety Club, something to make a special splash on the 10th anniversary. Well, they're quite wrong. This might happen at any time. We've already heard, for instance, that uh, the Redcoats, what they did, well, what you probably don't know is that for the last six or seven years, the Redcoats and the camps have been collecting anything up to 10,000 pounds a year as a matter of course for the Playing Fields Association. <laughs> Many happy returns of this day, every success in the future, and a very heartfelt thank you. <laughs> <laughs>